According to a recent report, a lithium shortage may possibly stall the electric car revolution and embed China's lead. Is this true? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. You're watching The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Fantastic to have you here. Welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel. If you're new, and there's a lot of you, make sure that you check out the 630 plus videos we have created over the last six months. If you want to know what's really going on, that is, if you don't, you know, just don't watch any of them. But if you want to know what's really going on, then make sure you have a look because most YouTube channels are telling you what you want to hear in order to get clicks and, well, preach to a captive audience. Here, I try not to do that. I try to tell you what's really going on in the industry so that you don't, well, invest your money in the wrong places or so you have a good understanding of what's really, really going on globally. Now, Neil Winton reports for Forbes that the electric car revolution will stall in the West if supplies of crucial battery elements like lithium fail to keep up with the forecast huge increase in demand. Now, he says that this will drive battery prices higher. And remember, battery prices have come down insanely over the last 10 years by 89%. It will decimate profit margins. And the coveted 100 US dollar per kilowatt hour battery, which would have signaled the arrival of affordable green vehicles, will remain on the launch pad. Now remember, right now, BYD actually makes their battery pack for well under that. Reports are it's about 88 US dollars per kilowatt hour for their battery pack. And that's why in China, you can buy electric vehicles, particularly BYD, but many other brands as well, that are on par, without question on par, with gas-powered vehicles in terms of price. In terms of performance and everything else, they're better. But in terms of price, they're on par. And in some cases, even cheaper. Western weaknesses in lithium-ion supply chains will slow electric vehicle adoption and demonstrate China's dominance of the EV market. According to a report from Global Data, a leading data and analytics company. Now, this kind of pressure might also delay Tesla's long promised affordable $25,000 electric car, which I talked about the Tesla Model A or the Tesla Model 2, as some people are calling it. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about that vehicle and what I think it will look like. Now, the report said that EV output is set to skyrocket to 12.8 million cars a year by 2026, with over half coming from China. I think this report is ludicrous. To be honest, I think by 2026, no less than half the world's global car production will be fully electric. That means that at least 30 million vehicles in that year, so nearly three times more than this report claims, will be fully electric. So the question is here, if this report is saying there could potentially be a lithium shortage by 2026, based on only 13 million cars, and if I'm saying 30 million cars would be produced in 2026 that are electric, then it does seem possible that there will be a lithium shortage. With lithium prices set to rise throughout the next decade, the EV sector in the West will have to face rising battery costs. If they pass costs onto the consumer, EV adoption will likely accelerate at a slower rate than previously expected, the report said. Now, I just want to point out here a little fact that many are not considering. This sort of rhetoric was mentioned, said about oil, for it was said in the 1920s and in the 30s, and it was said in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. In fact, it's been said about oil for every decade, for the last century. But did it ever really happen in the way that people forecast? Or did we just somehow magically find more supplies of oil? I'll leave it with you to consider that fact. Now, the International Energy Agency, IEA, has estimated that the growth of EVs could see lithium demand increase by over 40 times by 2030, according to the International Lithium Association, ILIA. Last year, lithium demand was about 320,000 tonnes and is expected to hit 1 million by 2025 and 3 million by 2030, according to Reuters. Now, if they're saying 3 million, it'll be 6 million at least by 2030. Now, remember, of course, there will be issues with supply of the next decade. Of course, some inevitable ones, but this will obviously drive miners to find more lithium. Currently, that's what they're doing. So obviously our known supplies we have now will change over the years. But 
eventually we will mine enough lithium and we won't need to continue mining it because we'll just continue to recycle that lithium and continue to use it for future batteries. So this is the great thing about mining for lithium. Eventually, we won't have to do it any longer. I've made several videos about this that go into detail on how this will work. Check out the links in the description below. Earlier this month, LMC Automotive predicted European EV sales would rise from 1.2 million in 2021 to 3.4 million in 2024, 6.1 million in 2027, and 10.5 million in 2030. US investment newsletter Energy and Capital's Luke Sweeney put it this way. As world leaders rush to implement green energy promises. They, the leaders, are ignoring the trillion ton elephant in the room. Carbon-free power and gasoline-free transportation cannot exist without mining an absurd amount of lithium. Right now, production is not even close to keeping up. We simply aren't pulling enough lithium out of the ground to match the projected demand, Sweeney said. Daniel Clark, thematic analyst at Global Data, said China held 80.5% of global lithium iron battery capacity in 2020. And even with the US and EU's best efforts, will still dominate by 2026 with an expected 61.4% share. Interesting. Seems to confirm a lot of what I've been saying for the last six months. The rising price of lithium demonstrates what many in the industry have warned about for some time. The growing divergence between supply and demand for lithium. Ultimately, this will lead to an increase in the price of EVs as automakers pass the cost on to the consumer, Clark said. I don't agree. It'll be interesting to see, though, what plays out. The average price of lithium carbonate has been erratic. Halving before doubling again, and this has made investors wary of investing in new capacity. Batteries are already the most expensive part of an EV. Cell costs would need to be notably below, below 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour for mainstream production to take off, which it already has in China. Sorry, guys, you seem to be ignoring what's going on over there. But anyway, but this isn't looking likely. Any increases in cost will be a blowout, will be a blow to the decarbonization agenda of advanced economies, as well as lead to a deceleration in the decarbonization of the automotive industry, Clark said in the report. Now, in an online interview, Clark was asked if the outlook for the price of lithium meant LMC Automotive's European EV sales targets were still possible. So were they? It very much depends on automakers. Estimates see the rising cost of lithium hitting the EV market sometime between 2022 and 2024. Manufacturers will have to decide on whether to absorb the cost or pass it on to the consumer. Uh, it's obviously nowhere near that simple. But anyway, the market will become more competitive as a result. It is very possible that the manufacturers with the deepest pockets, such as Toyota, are able to take market share by absorbing the cost of the battery and undercutting their competitors, who would be forced to increase their prices. Now, this is the kind of mainstream media reporting that would have you believe that Toyota is in some sort of magical position to succeed. The reality is, while I've made many videos about the reality of Toyota, and the reality is not looking good for them, I'll put links to those videos in the description below. When I hear this kind of thing from mainstream media, I feel... I think I feel angry because I feel like they're intentionally misleading shareholders who are going to lose hundreds of millions of dollars. Anyhow, Tesla, whose EV market is focused on premium cars right now, would likely not be too badly affected. No, I think that's true. They have 30% margins on their cars. Industry average is 8 to 10. So yes. But it will make them potentially reconsider their plans for a low-cost $25,000 Tesla Model 2. Now, I've got to say, even I know some people don't like Elon. Some of you here that watch the channel don't like him, but he's smarter than all of us. Sorry, he is. There's no one watching this channel. There's no, I'm nowhere near. Elon is well smarter than all of us, and he's been talking about lithium supply for years now. And obviously, Tesla has been working on getting that supply in place. They've got lots of plans for that. I highly doubt this will have a significant impact on Tesla simply because they're ahead of the game in terms of their planning. Now, Clark said that lithium represents about 7% of the total cost of a battery. Only 7%. So maybe it's not as dire as what we think. But you also need graphite, manganese, nickel, and cobalt. Unless, of course, the largest battery manufacturers in the world are CATL. The third largest now is BYD. And for those batteries that they make, you don't need graphite, manganese, nickel, or cobalt, but you do need phosphate and iron. 
Now we have a metric shit ton of iron, so that is irrelevant. However, phosphate on the other hand, we do have some serious challenges with, and I'll make a video about what's happening with phosphate very soon. It's a very, very intriguing issue. But I do believe it'll be easier to solve the phosphate issue than the graphite, manganese, nickel, and cobalt issues. Now, cobalt is not such an issue. If these guys actually knew what they were really talking about, they'd know that cobalt is being phased out of batteries full stop. We don't need it. We're phasing it out. It won't, it won't be used by 2024, probably at all in batteries. But the others, graphite, manganese, and nickel, yes, we do need those. However, thanks to the fires recently in lithium ternary batteries, which are produced primarily by LG Chem, Panasonic, NSK Innovation. What it has meant is that some of these companies are trying to move into lithium ion phosphate batteries and therefore won't be as affected by the prices of nickel and cobalt. Well, obviously cobalt is not needed anymore, which would affect battery supply issues. Now, Forbes has said that cobalt is used in the cathode, and the cathode is the most expensive part of a battery, which is in turn the most expensive part of an EV. However, necessity is the mother of invention, and the new battery chemistries have been developed all around the world. Um, obviously, the primary point of what a lot of these companies are doing is to remove this expensive component out of the battery. When there is a will, there is a way. So that's what's happening. Now, is the 100 kilowatt hour battery now in jeopardy thanks to the potential rising price of lithium? This is what the article says. It's hard to say. <laughs> of course, it's hard for you to say. You don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, recent reports have the price per kilowatt hour at 105 US dollars, but it is expected to rise next year as a result of the aforementioned forces at play. Now, some places are saying it'll rise next year. Some places are saying it'll go down next year. Depends on who you listen to. Lithium shortages will get worse next year, apparently, and may continue into the middle of the decade. It is important to remember that building a lithium mine takes seven years. That's true. And many automakers want high quality batteries. Mines are huge investments, much like chip fabrication plants. There isn't a lot of room for just increasing capacity most of these mines will be working around the clock anyway, Clark said. According to the ILIA, natural lithium minerals are relatively abundant and found in many countries. Currently, there are large industrial operators in Australia, Chile, Argentina, Bolivia, China, Brazil, Zimbabwe, and Portugal that produce lithium raw materials at significant scale. Although this number is set to rise as lithium production increases to meet demand. So now they're saying that production is actually increasing to meet demand. I think a little bit confused. Now experts say there are bottlenecks to the conversion processes needed to produce usable lithium. Plants take years to reach full production and this combined with accelerating demand means suppliers will remain tight and prices high. The big car and SUV makers are scrambling to set up deals to guarantee supplies. Tesla has a deal with Piedmont Lithium of North Carolina a company who I've invested in, by the way, and recommended on this channel a couple of times. Renault and BMW are investing in a Californian project. Companies like Stellantis, Renault and BMW are known to be investing in projects which seek to speed up and clean up the conversion process. It's safe to assume that every single auto company is doing the same thing. So Neil, thanks for some of your points. To be honest, I think if someone were to read this article without my input into it, then they'd be clueless and have no idea what was going on and think everything was going to shit. And to be honest, electric cars were screwed and the world was a mess because there's so many questions and so many contradictions. And this is what the mainstream media will give you. And to be honest, I understand why there's a lot of confusion around electric cars, because if you mean, if you read this kind of mainstream media mess, which some of it's good, some of it's confusing, which is what makes it a mess, then you get confused. So what is happening right now? Well, obviously, like I said, the biggest battery companies in the world create, build, manufacture lithium ion phosphate batteries, which don't need those expensive parts. Cobalt, manufacturers are moving away from cobalt, replacing it by using high nickel content and other various means. So cobalt is not really an issue. 
So as manufacturers get rid of cobalt and lithium ternary batteries, and as more manufacturers use lithium iron phosphate batteries, this will without doubt continue to drive down the cost of batteries, even if the cost of lithium does increase. Now, like I said, lithium costs per battery are only 7% of the battery. There is many other ways you can reduce the cost of the battery. Producing batteries at scale is a key way we can reduce costs. Now I have about 77 tabs or 80 or something around that area, 77 to 80 tabs open on my computer right now. And each one of those tabs is a new factory being built somewhere around the world right now that we're manufacturing batteries within the next few years. There are so many battery factories going up all around the world, particularly more in China, but many in Europe, quite a lot in America. That, I, I don't know, I've lost count, something like 77 to, 7 to 80, right? So will this drive down the cost of batteries? Absolutely. Will it increase the cost of lithium? Yes, it will. But ultimately, more supply of batteries will drive down the costs. Hit point in case. BYD recently increased its battery cost by 30%. Why did they do that? I made a video about why they did that. It's not because the lithium price went up for them. They have lithium supply contracts that don't change the cost for what they pay for their batteries that they make. The reason is because the demand is too high. They simply can't produce enough batteries for the demand. Right now, their electric car sales are going through the roof. All their battery supply, or most of it, is going into their own cars. So they just said to the market, you want any more of our batteries? You're paying a premium because we don't have the supply to give to you. Therefore, if you want it, you're going to have to pay a whole lot more. So the key issue here for batteries is supply and demand for the end product. If there is... 10 times more batteries being manufactured, that will certainly ease the demand side of the equation, meaning that's a significant reason that costs will go down. Another reason is manufacturing capacity, manufacturing speed. There is billions of dollars right now, and I mean billions of dollars being invested into speeding up production of batteries. Look what Tesla is doing with 4680 battery cells. Everyone knows they have to compete with Tesla, right? Do you think that other companies are not doing this? Tesla made a gigacast for its car. There is six Chinese companies right now, six, working with the same company to use gigacasting for their cars. Everybody is paying attention to Tesla. Everybody sees what they're doing. And if they think it works, it will work. And if they think they can get an advantage by doing it, they will copy them. It makes sense. Why wouldn't you? You have to. The same thing is happening with batteries. All these battery factories, when we add them all up, will account to many many terawatts in the end, in a decade, of battery supply. And sure, yes, lithium iron will increase in price, lithium. And sure, yes, lithium will increase in price. That's inevitable. However, what this means is, well, the same thing that happens with oil. The higher the price goes, the more companies that invest into supply. So never fear, don't worry. Even if you hear that somehow this will stall the electric car revolution, I would say it probably won't. Now that's my take on it, but what do I know? I'm sure some of you are much smarter than I am. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about what will happen over the next 10 years. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.